everybody. I wanted to share my experiences recently in preparing for the CCI route and switch. I uh, wanted to put a lab together with some virtual routers just to do commands on. Uh, I don't want anything, you know, to run the 20 plus routers. I just want something that'll run, you know, a handful of routers that I can just test the uh, configurations on. Um, just a point of reference, it is July 19, 2015, and it's the route and switch version 5. Uh, I know this all changes pretty often, so I wanted to get that out there. So my requirements were that I wanted a device that wasn't very noisy, that the cost wasn't, you know, thousands of dollars, not a lot of heat, and the ease of the ESXi installation. The heat is a major concern because it's summertime now, for one thing, but also, you know, it's just increased costs for air conditioning. The, the electricity in general is going to be more expensive for a server. So, yeah, you could buy a server and run, you know, 128 gigs of RAM and run, you know, ridiculous number of routers. Uh, I prefer to use the rack rentals for that. I just wanted something that I can run a handful of routers on. So in my searching, I found that, you know, for the most part, people were recommending a Dell 780 uh, it's kind of an older laptop or desktop, but it, it is still functional. It can have up to 16 gigs of RAM. I was hoping I'd be able to run more routers on it, but at a time, uh, I can only run five routers because they require 2.5 gigs of RAM each. I tried less than that, and it will load, but it'll keep giving you an error message in the the configuration file and I just didn't want to run into bugs or anything so you can look online and find a 780 hopefully you can find one with 16 gigs already or you know you can order the RAM uh, I was lucky to find one that had the 16 gigs of RAM in it for it was around four hundred dollars or something four or five hundred so um, doesn't really matter what it comes with operating system wise because you're going to be downloading a, a clean install of ESXi anyway so it doesn't really matter. The, the one I got actually had a bad hard drive didn't really care uh, I was going to use my own drive anyways so the first time I actually installed it with the physical hard drive the old style it took me for five routers it probably took about an hour and a half and with the SSD it only took me like 10 minutes so I would highly recommend if you're going to do this option go with a solid state drive it's way faster and you know you only need like a 64 gig or 128 gig SSD drive is all you need I did not have any issues with you know the first time I, I built it I used a physical hard drive or the old style and you know the second time I did it with the solid state drive so to, to install it you know First of all, you get a VMware. You will probably want to create an account. Just makes it easier to download their software, so not a big deal. They don't send you a lot of spam or anything. So once you log in, the default is going to send you to Hyper Version 6. Uh, most of the applications or the the what they call an OVF templates are for 5.1 or 5.5. Most of the documentation out there right now says to run 5.1. So I'm not going to go through there here because this site changes all the time anyways. But once you log in with an account, you'll find a place where you can download the various hypervisor modules, including different versions of the hypervisor. So you're looking for 5.1 or 5.5. And it'll be an ISO that you download. It's probably, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, it's really not that large of an ISO. Yeah, here it is right here. So it's it's about um, three 300 megs or so. So not a big deal. Burn it to a CD or, or DVD. And you basically throw it in. You know, throw it in the PC, load the software, it runs you through a basic installation. I'm not going to go through that whole process. It is pretty simple to get it up and running. The other thing you're going to want to download is uh, you're going to have to get a Cisco.com. Uh, you don't need an account to do this. You can see it still says log in here. But, you know, this path changes all the time as well. But you're looking for CSR 1000V. 
I would, you know, spend a little bit of time looking to see exactly which version of this you want to have. Cisco has all kinds of different versions available, so, you know, just do some research currently right now which one people are recommending based on your ESXi version and your CSR version. Uh, so you want to download this to this goes into your your PC. Um, you're basically going to install a client, which you also get from this is the the hypervisor. There's also a client that you're going to need um, that basically is a GUI. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process. But the purpose of this is just to give you my feedback. So when you launch the ESXi console, uh, it, it's a GUI here. This is after you've installed, you know, throw the disk in, installed ESXi, given an IP address on your network network you'll then you will have to use a username password default user is root and then set a password you'll launch the client put in the IP address and when you start it won't have all those other VMs that will just have this uh, not a whole lot to look at here other than you know you can kinda go through the summary see where you're at then you're gonna deploy a template you know you've already downloaded it from the Cisco site you just go to file deploy OVF template you're going to browse for where it is, next, uh, next, and, and of course you're going to name it uh, test CSR1. Uh, it doesn't really matter here. This, These GUIs are going to change over time as well. Uh, I recommend, and almost everybody out there recommends thin provisioning. That basically means it adjusts the space it needs. Shouldn't be a big deal because it's you know a virtual router. So. Uh, I'm using just VM network. You could go in here and create multiple VLANs. I'm not doing that at this point. I'm just kind of showing you the overall experience. So you can see now it's it's deploying, it's creating it, setting up the files, not a big deal. SSD, way faster. As you can see here, it's created it, bam, done, completed successfully. Uh, there's a couple of things you'll want to do when you do edit this. Um, you will, by default, it made it 20 or 4 gigs. Uh, unfortunately, it won't let you set 2.5. So basically, I believe it's 2560 is 2.5 gigs of RAM. Uh, they do recommend going into CPU and setting to two cores. Uh, the one other thing highly recommend is going to add and adding the serial interface. And what the serial interface is going to let us do is telnet to it from anywhere inside our network, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to connect to a network here. I'm going to use the server. And typically the port, you know, telnet is the normal 23, I believe it is. Um, well, I'm going to set it to, for this, just uh, 2011. I'm already using 2001, but I'm going to use 2011 as the port for Telnet. What this means is I can launch a client, and for the port number, I'd use 2011. A couple of things to note here for troubleshooting that, you know, uh, you can find it if you look online, but basically, uh, if you try to install an actual license, the trial license, then it disables this. Only during the evaluation period or with an enterprise license can you actually connect to this. So I would leave it in the evaluation version unless you got the money for uh, the enterprise license. So I start that. Now I can turn it on. Uh, one thing to note about the actual server itself you do have to make a security change and uh, down here under authentication services uh, security profile so security profile there is a serial VM serial port over you gotta go to properties here and this virial VM serial port connection that does have to be checked um, oh, here it is right here. VM serial port over network. This is what allows it, which you can check this if you want, even with the non-trial license, but it will basically kick you out. It won't let you connect if you use the enterprise or non-enterprise trial license or, uh, yeah, basically you have to use the trial license. So one thing that I also found once I started it is when you boot here, you want to have the console up. And when it launches, it'll go through this initial script of setting up the router. Let me go ahead and shut down one of my other ones. 
down guest. So it's not starting. So what I had there is that uh, um, had another machine going and that was taking up all the resources anyways. Uh, so the one thing I will know here is that it has this auto detect and virtual and serial console. This is important the first time it boots up. Uh, if you plan to get in it via serial all the time, I would recommend choosing the serial console. This is only the first boot up. So if you screw it up, you basically have to start all over and, and get it you know, to, to start up with this screen, hit serial console. Now, once you do that, you cannot get in via this console anymore. You do have to tell that to get into it. So I want to point that out. And also on a, a regular hard drive, it takes a while to do that initial setup and boot up. I'm not going to record that whole session, but I just want you to know that if you have a regular hard drive, not an SSD, plan for it to take 10, 15, 20 minutes to do this initial setup. It'll have to reboot a couple of times. Where a solid state drive, it, it did it in, you know, probably under five minutes. So uh, I have another couple of machines running too, so it's tying up a couple of resources. Uh, also, like I said, it it's not going to show you everything here. You're going to have to telnet into it. So uh, the only other thing that I ran into is on the network if you go to the main host and go to configuration and network adapters sorry networking and then down here um, I would go to properties and click on the network click edit you do want to make sure that all these are on all VLANs and then security go ahead and make sure promiscuous mode was on and, and you want to do that for pretty much uh, all the uh, the networks because uh, I, when I you're trying to get into the server management IP when you do that 2012 or whatever so um, I didn't have that selected either the first time so I had to change this on the management as well so th those are the big ones now I can only run like I said with all five of these running CSR 1 through 5 I I'm sitting at like 15, 14 to 15 gigs out of 16 gigs you use. So um, you can only use five routers at a time, which isn't bad. Uh, again, I'm more concerned about the noise, the heat, and everything like that. And I think the 780 is a, a great choice for 16 gigs. Um, but I want to share my exp experiences. Next, I'm going to go with the, another Dell model PC that I think can hold 32 gigs of RAM, so I'll probably do another video on that. Th this wasn't to go through the whole process. If you do some searching, you'll find how to install vCenter and, and all the specifics I kind of went over. But I wanted to point out, you know, to make sure that, you know, you set up that serial port, s serial port that you s use the evaluation license, and then there's various ways to get around that. Um, Otherwise, if you do the, the, the license trial that's free, you can't use the serial connection, so that's a big deal. So you want to use the, the evaluation license. It's good for 60 days right now, so that's not a super big deal. And then also the issue with setting up the serial port and under networking, the VLAN is all of them, and then also making sure that it's promiscuous on everything. And then basically use VLANs to isolate everything. But it works pretty good. It's nice to finally have a router in my house where I can just, any PC at all, I can just bring up a putty and launch it and go straight into, uh, this is putty manager actually, so um, you can just go in here and I probably have some of these turned off right now. Yeah, there it is right there. So you can see it's in there, Shover, well, it's been up for one week, so... Um, pretty useful stuff to, to be able to go in there and test your initial uh, routers. So good luck out there, and I'll leave future videos. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.